When new pickleball players come to the sport for the very first time, they often think of two things when it comes to strategy related to lobbing. The first thing is they think, hey, my opponent or both my opponents are up near the net, I should lob the ball over them, hit it high and slow, get it right over those people at the net. That's often what they think. They often think something else too. They think, ooh, if I come to the net and my partner's already up there, we're gonna be vulnerable when our opponents lob us, so I better stay back a little bit. These are things that new players often feel. But have you ever noticed how often, or rather I should say, how rarely you see lobs happen in advanced pickleball? All four players can go an entire match without even attempting a lob sometimes. Here, why don't we look at some advanced pickleball and you can see for yourself. Here are some points from the 2020 Pro Players Cup, featuring four of the game's best players. On the far side of the court, we see Lucy Kovalova and Catherine Peronto, and on the near side, Vivian David and Belinda Zabinden. Notice how throughout these points, all four players are up near the non-volley line. To a new player, the obvious strategy may seem to play a lob, given that the players are so close to the net. But as you can see in these points, lobs are very, very seldom, because players understand how much risk they're taking on when they hit one. Lobs are really rare in advanced pickleball, and it's important to understand why this is the case. Well, first of all, when we're talking about doubles, you've got four adult-sized human beings on a relatively small court. There isn't a lot of room to work with, and it's really easy to send that ball a little too high or a little too fast and then it goes out, or to hit a little too low or a little too slow and then it gets smashed by the opponents. And when we're talking about advanced players, we're talking about people who are really good at moving around the court, and sometimes they've got great vertical jumps too. So getting the ball up and over them and out of harm's way is a lot easier said than done. Here's Matt Nielsen pounding this high ball with an inside out forehand smash. Tyson McGuffin thought for a moment he could get this ball up and over Tyler Loon, but he quickly learns his lesson. Morgan Evans tried to be tricky here, disguising his lob as a dink. But Bubba Zabindin and Zane Affleck had other ideas. Ben Johns knows that Sarah Ansbury has a great overhead smash, and so to make sure that she can't get it, he makes sure to get the ball high and over her. The trouble is, a ball that's even hit a little bit too hard will go out. And here's Johns again, this time on the receiving end of a poor lob, which turns into an easy point for him and his partner, Annalie Waters. So you might at this point say, well Mark, I'm not a pro. The people I play with aren't pros. The pros can get to those balls, but us regular people can't. And that may be the case. It's true that not everyone can move like the pros can move. But in my experience, when it comes to using the lob as a main strategy in pickleball, the juice just isn't worth the squeeze. It's so easy to hit that ball a little too hard or a little too high and have it go out of bounds. And if you don't hit it hard or high enough, well, then your opponents get to smash it. And this is true at pretty much all levels. Are there exceptions to this rule? Of course there are. It is possible to hit a great lob that gets up and over the opponent, but it's really hard to do this. And in my experience, using lobbing as a main strategy in pickleball is typically a losing plan. But there's some good news to this realization as well. As much as it's true that it's difficult or risky to play good lobs over your opponent's head, it's difficult and risky for them to try to do the same thing against you. Unless you happen to be a really slow mover or somehow can't get back at all, your opponents are gonna to have to be really good at threading the needle, hitting that lob high enough and deep enough that you can't get it as an overhead smash, but not hitting it so hard or so high that it goes out of bounds. Is it possible that when you come up to the net that your opponents might lob you and you can't get it? You might lose the rally? Of course it's possible. Yes, this can happen. But I bet you that if you go out and you were to keep a tally of what happens, you would notice that more often than not, your winning points, your winning rallies, because you're up at the net being scary, putting pressure on your opponents. And sure, every once in a while, they're gonna hit a lob that you can't get back. But I bet you that most of the lobs they hit, you're either gonna have a chance to smash or that ball's gonna go out of play. So my advice to you is to work on your overhead smash, work on your movement, be better at chasing down those lobs, yes. But don't be afraid of coming forward. Moving forward and joining your partner at the net is a way to apply pressure, to make your opponents worried about you. And if you lose a couple points here and there because of a great lob, well, that's probably nothing compared to the number of points you're winning because you're up at the net applying that pressure.